So uh, now let's look at the least cost cell method of solving a transportation problem. And you're going to use the data that was used in our previous illustration, where we have four sources and uh, three destinations. The row totals and column totals are given, and this is a balanced transportation problem. So you will notice that the difference between, or the difference among the methods uh, comes in uh, how we decide the cell to allocate first. That's the only difference between the methods. In the first one, in the first method, we were using the Northwest corner cell as the priority cell in the allocation. Now in this method of uh, LCC, we use the least cost cell, the cell with the least cost as the priority in the allocation. And usually we say, if there is a tie, you break the tie randomly. So in our case, uh, if you look at the cost matrix, and the cost matrix is this one. That's where the cost matrix ends. Forget about the raw totals. That's the cost matrix. So from there, you check the least cost. So the costs here are 2, 7, 4, 1, 3, 3, 5, 4, 7, 2, 6, and 1. So the idea is you allocate first to the cell with the least cost of transportation. These are the unit costs. So we have two cells, cell S2D3 and cell S4D1. And because there are two cells, we just pick one at random. So we can pick this one. So what do we allocate here? You either allocate eight or you allocate 18, the smaller of the two. So here you put eight. Then you take away eight here and you also take away eight the other side. So you take away eight here to get zero. You take away eight here to remain with 10. Then you delete the row which has been satisfied. In our case, we're going to delete this row. You delete that row because it has been satisfied. Then in the remaining matrix, you check the least cost. So now we come back to this guy. We either allocate a seven or we allocate 14. We will always allocate the smaller of the two. So there are seven, you take away seven here, you take away seven there, you get seven. Then if there's a row or column whose demand or requirement has been satisfied, you delete it. So we delete this column. In the remaining cost matrix, we identify the smallest cost. So you only work with undeleted cells. So I hope you can see the undeleted cells. Huh? So we have deleted the entire of column one and we have deleted the entire of row two. So we are remaining with this cell, that cell, this one, this one, this one, and that one. So we're only remaining with six cells. So out of those six cells, the one with the minimum cost is this one. Where we either allocate 10 or seven. So we put seven Then you take away seven here, you get three. You take away seven here, you get zero. And you need the row, which has a row total, or column, which has a, row, uh, which has a, a total of zero. So we delete this guy. So now we are remaining with only four undeleted cells. That is uh, uh, cell three, two, and three, three. We also have cell one, two, and one, three. So out of those, we identify the one with the least cost and we have a tie. So we break the tie randomly, we can allocate here. And there we either allocate a three or a five. So we put a three, you take away three, you get two. You take away three here, you get zero. You delete the column, which has a zero total in this case. So you delete this one. So now how many, cells are undeleted. We have this cell here, delete them. We have this cell, that cell is still undeleted. And we also have this cell. All the other cells have been deleted, all the others. So uh, the minimum of the two, minimum cost is found here. And uh, how much do we allocate there? either a seven or a nine. So we put a seven. 
you take away a seven, you take away a seven, you get two. So that tells you delete this row. Here. We delete this row because it has been satisfied. So now there is only one cell which is undeleted. This cell here. So that's why we're going to allocate next here. We either allocate a two or a two. So we put a two. Then this goes to zero, this goes to zero. You can delete both. If your problem was not balanced, you would not get a two and a two. You would get two different numbers, meaning that you can't get a solution. Okay, so now we have a solution. Uh, let's write it in a, in a, in a cleaner space. And then we see how it looks like. So here is a, a final copy of our locations. We see that from source one to destination two, we are transporting two units from source one to destination three, uh, three units, which gives us a total of five units. That means that the raw requirement there are satisfied. And the other ones are also uh, easy to see. So here we are transporting eight, which satisfies all the requirement. So here we transport seven, which requires all the requirement here. But here we transport seven, and here we also transport seven, which gives us 14. Then column wise, you check, uh, the column allocation should also be satisfied. These are seven, which is equal to this. These are two plus seven, which is nine. These are three plus eight, uh, that is 11 plus seven, which is 18. So meaning that the row and column requirements are satisfied. So what are the solutions uh, to this question? So this is the solution that we have. So we have X11 is zero. That means that we are transporting nothing here. Then X12 is two and so on and so forth. All the way up to here. And the total cost of transportation, you multiply the number of units being transported by the unit cost. And then if you do the math, you'll get the total cost of transporting all those goods to those destinations. According to this method is 83. You realize that this method has given us a lower value of the transportation cost. We are solving the same problem, but the cost here looks a little bit smaller. When you go to the other method, you realize that the other method even gives a smaller value. So uh, the methods that we are discussing uh, in this class will be in the order of their efficiency, where the first method, the Northwest corner cell method will give you the, is the, is the least efficient, followed by this, and then you have the last one. So uh, let's meet in the other video. Uh, that is where we'll be discussing the Vogel's approximation method.